tutorial starts with a song, but it's only a few seconds long. Computer animation. Computer animation. Computer animation. Let's get started with animation. Hello. I show you three animations. This is the first one. And I want you to guess what's the difference between them. Here comes the second one. Quite different. What is the difference? I think it's pretty obvious. But it's getting a little bit more tricky when we turn from this animation to the third animation. By the way, the rendering of these 400 frames took, this is the third one, uh, took about one hour each for each of them. So what is the difference? Well, the first one, it's that one, has nothing happening. Well, it does have something happening. And what it does have happening is this. The camera moves. But in the first example, the particles stay still. You see, this is a camera move over 400 frames. It retreats. But the difference between this one and that one is more tricky. So what is it? What's the difference? Well, it's just a simple command in Maya, which is sitting here in the rendering preferences under Arnold Render, it's motion blur enabled. And when we have a closer look, I just changed the lens of the camera for this, you see that this is very obvious. particles which move faster or are closer to the camera actually um, are more blurred than others. Well now you probably want to know how I built this scene and this is the meat of this tutorial so to say. I could explain you now what I'm planning to do in order to achieve this result but I won't. Just follow me here. We create a cylinder and this cylinder is going to be the container of our particles. I move it up, I go to the side window and press the key insert. Insert makes it not makes me not move the whole object but only the pivot and I move it all the way down there, press insert again because I want to scale it up and um, this is very easily done uh, if I hadn't done this and the pivot would stay in the middle, I would scale it to both sides, to the top and to the bottom. But I want to leave it like this. Okay, now I get rid of the cap of the top, really. Actually, before I do that, I raise the resolution. And I raise the resolution because... You see that? Um, because I want more particles inside and I think it has to do with the resolution here. And you need to do this before uh, actually deleting certain faces and that's what I'm going to do now. I right mouse click faces and I select the ones here in the middle and uh, this selects obviously the ones at the bottom as well and I with the control key I deactivate the selection part there and I delete the top ones here. Now back to object mode I have a cylinder with an open top. Uh, why I do this, this is just a matter of experience. You don't need to do this really. Now you go to FX because we deal with special effects and we go to end particles and we use the top entry here, fill object. Use the option box. The option box asks you how many particles you want, what kind of resolution and for example let's type in 20 and apply. Now we have a box full of particles. They're very small and what we'll do right away 
is we make them bigger. We go in the end particle shape section, we go to shading, and under shading we see points. We want to have spheres. And the spheres are quite big, but maybe quite all right. If you find them too big or too small, go to particle size and change this value for the radius. Currently it's set to 0 0.168. Now, when we run the simulation and the cache is being written already, this is the red line here, we can just run the simulation and you see that the particles fall down. This is natural because um, the particles don't feel that object here. We don't want the particles to feel that object because this object is only for creating the particles. It won't serve as the collision object. Uh, why that is? Well, it gives us much more flexibility when we just create a duplicate of this cylinder here. Control D and scale this slightly up like this. Maybe move it a little bit to the bottom, lower down. This is just fine. And this new cylinder, the cylinder number two, is going to be the collider for our particles. So we need to select that cylinder two and with the control key, the particles, the end particles. And now we go to end cloth. Why is that? Well, because the create passive collider command is there and it uh, applies to all kinds of uh, n objects for example to n hair if you want to n hair to collide you need to go to n cloth to create that passive collider which we've just done now we delete the first cylinder we don't need it anymore it was just the cylinder which created the particles so let's run the simulation now and of course we don't see very exciting effects because this is visible. So let's hide it. We need it as a collision object, but we can actually hide it. Now the particles fall down. What they don't do is quite interesting. Can you see what it is? Well, they don't self-collide. And in order to do that, uh, to create a self-collision, we need to go back to our particles and the particles let's close the radius and the collisions here you have self collide now the calculation is being done again and when you run it you see that they interact with each other which is just great and now we make the push up Select the polycylinder 2, that's the cylinder where they collide with, and we, for example, create a sign function for the up and down movement. We could also use keyframes. Actually, let's use key keyframes in this case. Um, I select the polycylinder and I press S in order to create a keyframe. Now I move this down. And since I have auto key activated here, it creates a new keyframe here. Now I move it up. And I move it down again, just a little bit. And then moving it up quite a bit. And then slowly moving it down. And just a little bit up. Just a little bit down. Just a little bit up. Just a little bit down. And now drastically up, like this, and slowly all the way down until frame 120 in our case. So we need to recalculate the simulation, and it's done already. And now the simulation looks like this. And you're pushing up particles. That's all I wanted to show you. Oh, and by the way, when you render these things and you have that cache set on, activated, you won't get an animation. That's why the first rendering I showed you at the beginning f sort of failed. The camera movement is okay, but nothing in the simulation happens. So what you need to do is you go with the right mouse button 
to cache playback and delete or deactivate the cache playback, now you have to rely on frame-by-frame -frame evaluation of the simulation. That means the elegance of scrubbing back and forth is gone. You know, there's, this is problematic. It doesn't really work anymore. But um, the rendering goes okay. So the first attempt to render that was failed because of the cache switched on. For rendering, you need to switch it off. So Maya renders one frame after the other. And motion blur is here. Render settings, Arnold renderer, motion blur, and enable. Have a nice day. Bye-bye. Thank you.